where they live in such a situation that the uh, housing is substandard, if they meet a threshold of, uh, of uh, income stream that lets the uh, grant works come in and renovate or build a, a standalone house of approximately how many square feet? 11, 11, 11. Roughly 1,100 square feet. Am I covering the high point? Yes, sir. So anyway, Mr. Richards is here to represent that, and the city would have a small obligation in order to instigate this type of situation for a low-income individual. They have to meet certain criteria, as I mentioned, and we will be looking into doing that. Tonight, we're going to address the, the beginning of that look-in. It's not an obligation, I'll write. It's just basically allowing the city to do the interview process to qualify and see if there is people of that situation that we can help. This is a state-funded uh, half million dollar it's, it's actually HUD money. It's a perfect house. Well, sir, I was didn't know if you made it or not. So anyway, all we've done is call roll call. And uh Hey John, what we're doing, uh, what I was talking to this gentleman about was making the clarification on the five thousand dollars of the like kind of match and on the uh, escrow and eighty thousand. Okay, so, so you'd like to just yes. go over that. The in kind match uh, 
will be uh, performed by the city by not charging any fees for the, if you have a building permit fee, you'd waive the building permit fee. There's going to be a new tap required for water. You would waive those, waive those fees. And uh, any assistance you then provide into the project, and, you know, there's all kinds of ways you can provide assistance to the project. That is not tax. In kind is in kind. That means services rendered. So, so that's five thousand dollars, and we yes. basically don't have to pay that. That's exactly that's right. That's an in kind match. Okay. So in kind matches come in just about every grant program you that you have. And then, it's, you just don't charge for the things you normally charge for yeah. when a new home is built. Uh, we're not. That yeah, doesn't apply to us. That's good. Okay. Now the eighty thousand dollars in escrow. The eighty thousand dollars in escrow is going to be covered one of two ways. First, you can set aside eighty thousand. You don't want to do that. What you can do is that we will get your auditor to, and I brought you the sample letter that we just did from Wolf City, and it says, Mayor, based on the ex past experience with grant programs and past audits, the applicant has in place the best practices and the financial capacity necessary in order to effectively administer the home grant award. They would generally buy that without actually. Yes, sir. But again, this resolution wording comes from the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs. It's the same resolution that every community in Texas passes if they choose to participate in the program. Well, and, and the other thing, the other uh, thing about this program is, is the city does not have to put up the two thousand dollars per unit. This can be donated by church, individual, any organization, VFW, whoever, right? And your economic development corporation. And economic development. So this is really, it could come down to the city not putting up a pension. And the monies are due at the completion of the last one or at the beginning of the first one? <coughs> that money comes at the end. When all of them are completed? Yes, sir. So, well, I mean, When you're saying all of them are completed, if we, do you decide to do one or up to six homes at the get-go? Or do you... No, ma'am. You're going to, a, your application to the TDHCA will be for six houses. Okay. It will be for the full grant. Okay. And then if it has to be scaled back, it has to be scaled back. Okay. But your application to TDHCA will say we're good, we intend to build, we hope to build six. six. Okay. And the only thing that would scale it back is the $2,000 worth of funds not being available for the project per house, right? Or is there other? Really no, the only thing was scale it back is you didn't have enough qualified applicants. Qualified applicants, yeah. Well, I meant I have to, you know. That, that sure would be the thing that would scale it back. Yeah, but, but um, <clears throat> that would be the only thing to scale it back? Yes, sir. Well, you you it's a, quali it's right a qualified applicant. Well, day. it's, it, again, you know, it's it's a it's a very extensive process that go through. And, and when you're talking tax returns and bank statements and all that sort of thing to yeah. prove, you know, their financial standing, it's complicated. And some people are hesitant to... Get, provide that information to people. Well, one of the things that concerned me was uh, uh, that they had to be current on their taxes, and um, I don't know what else, maybe homeowners do. They have to be current on their, well, the homeowners, is, there wouldn't be enough for that. taxes. Right. And, uh, and their utilities. And, and their utilities. Their city utilities. Okay. They have oh. to be current. Oh. Okay. I got you. Well, I don't know. I think it's a very good program. And, uh, uh, you know, if we could benefit uh, six families with this, if we could qualify six families for this, I think it's a good thing. That's just my opinion. Are you saying that just as long as it's within the boundaries of Cobb City? It has to be in the city limits. Right, I'm saying we just annex. So, right. we but considered our annex probably and everything else. Yes, sir. But it, it cannot be outside. The, we, we can't build, only the county. The county can apply for a home program, too. But we're not, you know, we're not talking to, you know, we're not doing accounting things. This is the same thing. I had a question. I, I know a family, it's a mother and uh, elderly mother and daughter. Mm -hmm. They live together. Is it their combined income? Yes, it's household income. Where's my application? Uh, all, we, all we need is a resolution yeah. signed tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I would like to make a motion that we uh, put these wheels into motion and uh, whatever it takes. And, and your company is the one that's going to make the presentation, like you did for the building, uh, to the government for the application. We don't have to make it. We'll, we'll just, it, it's a paper. Somebody, somebody will deliver this application tomorrow. 
to the MCA. And so that, we, that we, we really are hands off with this. Your company is providing everything necessary. Well, your your secretary is going to get some paperwork done on her. Okay. But I think she knows that she can call me and get some help. You want to fill it out for me? <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. All right, it's been motion and second that we approve this and sign this resolution. Any other questions? 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 Mm -hmm. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Got a unanimous one, Angela. Motion carried. All right, we'll get this thing started. Pretty good, right there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Happy to issue with it. Have a finished this up, and this will be the official plan. At least we know probably six of our citizens are now invited home. I hope we can get six. You can't be too close. That's a no-brainer. I feel great. I'm telling you. I'm telling you because I know a warm, fuzzy a couple of homes right now that need to be. Uh, and this would be yeah, first you of all. Good thing. Good thing. Can't be. I'm going to get out for the. Before the ordinance starts. <laughs> I've dealt with ordinances all my life. <laughs> I'm going with you. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> this is the man pro tail, baby. Come oh. on. All right. Second order, baby. Yeah. There you go. Uh, we're going to go on to the agenda item of discuss ordinances. One of the things that, uh, not to have this drawn into a, uh, a problem, we're only going to be able to discuss this tonight. We're going to try to flange it up, and then we'll put it on the order of business to vote on it. Since it's not labeled to actually consider and act upon, I don't want to have any kind of a conflict for someone saying it wasn't a legal meeting. So we're just going to get this ironed out tonight. Then we'll set the document aside and set up another meeting to actually vote on and have it finished at the end. So what I was going to do is break this meeting up in three parts. I would like the citizenry of the city who's come in here tonight to offer them a, a, a little bit of time to discuss with us their, any of their apprehensions or questions or needs they may have and what they see in this document. We do realize there's some language here that needs to be changed. Steve's got it on a flash drive. We're going to do some on the fly changing with the document. We're going to try to stay current with the discussion. Uh, I don't want us to go off and vector into various uh, uh, arguments that's going to draw this out for an all night discussion. Try to be as precise. There's a sign up sheet, and I should have made this aware. There's a yellow sheet of paper over there with some uh, numbers on it. If anybody wants to sign up to stand up and ask about anything particular in the language in this document or something they want to get clarified on or offer, something to be changed on the document. We want this moment to say this third of the meeting to be addressing your thoughts. The next third of the meeting, we'll, we will uh, come back to the city council members after hearing y'all's input and discuss with ourselves and, and uh, see what it is that we can mesh together with us. And then using y'all's input and our thoughts, we will defer to Steve and his members of his panel out of the city for them to clarify, offer any adjustments, and uh, see what we can do to make this document fit our city, per se. So, anyway, with that said, this next period, this next third of the time we hope to be here, I'd like to dedicate to y'all, and, and please be brief and be to the point, and uh, we'll get this expedited along and try to get this over with so we go home and see one in our American Idol tonight. So, anyway, with that said, uh, if anybody's on that sign sheet, there's still some signatures left to be put on. Is there anybody who wish to have it signed that's going to raise their hand? Well, I'm, I'm a, well, we possibly could if it's that yeah. dramatic, but I don't want to get into a chaos. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Is there people still to sign? People still to sign? <laughs> Well, if it doesn't make a good point, I'm not going to hold it. Uh, it's okay. All right. Thank you. Again, thanks, folks, for y'all showing up. I know you got other things to be doing. we got six signatures here, so this should fit a time frame that we can all uh, at least listen to two or three minutes comment. 
and brevity be nice, uh, but we can understand if you're trying to make a point, we'll let you continue your thoughts. But one of you write, just like me, and I can't read my own writing, the first name looks like an L. Okay. I'm looking forward to this. Okay. No, it's, it's uh, Mr. Uh, Savage, it looks like. Mr. Savage, you have the floor. Well, Public City probably needs to address some of these issues. These ordinances were written over 20 years ago for a type home rule city, not a type B. The language here, some of this is this city in its size and its particular location <coughs> in, in the law books has no authority to regulate such as superior loans. The city has, council has no authority to, to determine what the courts are going to classify a lien as. You're going to lean on somebody's house or car, you're going to, well, your lien falls when the state law says it is, not some council decision that says it's superior. You've got things in here you get to address state agencies that haven't even existed in 20 years. They haven't even been on the books. This is going to make the laughing stop of Henderson County if you pass it as it is, if not the state. So I recommend you pass it without reading it like it's been advised three times. It's never going to find court because I've got it on public record. The intent was to enforce it as people seek fit, not against everybody. It is selected enforcement. It was designed that way from day one, and it's going to run in, and it's going to run into trouble with that from, from now on. You can ask, no, I'm not lying. The judge right here, selected enforcement is illegal. And these are not written for a type B city. There's things here you constitutionally cannot do. These were written for a, a home rule city. I don't think it was a suburb of a, uh, Austin. Not coffee city, a suburb of what? Gone out of more stations. You know, it's a whole different scenario from major city to the rural. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you how can you tell some old lady, the little lady's retired, or man, that he cannot put his rocker on the front porch. And that's what this does. Because it's not an approved outdoor patio equipment. Well I don't particularly like the Chinese brand of Approved outdoor equipment that you get down at the dollar store. I think they look much trashier than some big rocker. But this outlaws the rocker and puts them in trashy patio parts. I see it's just some weird stuff in here that needs to be thought out by the council, not outside the council. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Uh, if I might, Steve, to address his point as to the type B and uh, the other type city he's referring to, do you see a conflict in that where the language in here is conflicted as to what type of government we operate here? It doesn't specify what type of uh, government is under operation. Uh, I did send this whole uh, ordinance proposal to uh, the city attorney and he signed off on it. He said it looks good. Go for it. Can, can I so say something, John? Uh, hey, listen. Okay. If, if, if Mr. Savage has a problem with some things, it would have been nice to have him document this, what he's saying we won't be able to do, like what ordinances or what state statutes are, are no longer in effect. But to come in and just uh, make a blanket statement is no... Pass it. Don't read it. Don't do anything. Just pass it. And you're going to give my website fodder for six weeks. Mr. Well, Savage, he has the floor right there. No, well, was addressing no, I wasn't addressing you. I was I was making a point that if Mr. Savage has something to say, put it in writing, document what the problems may be to help the city. If if you're going to just say something as a blanket statement but not, not to provide any kind of proof that says, here's what we should be doing, I want to help you with this, then it's no help at all. Then it's just it's just talking. Because you know, if, if a person doesn't document the problem, then, then how do we know where to look for the problem? So since he's read this, he should be up on it. He should have brought us his suggestions. Mr. Savage, I'm going to put by your name the legality question. If you may let me address what you've just said, the legality. So when it comes back to this forum here, we may dwell some time on that amongst ourselves. A, a B Savage? Is there a B Savage? John, can I say something? Yes. <clears throat> this meeting tonight, I, I thought the intention of this meeting tonight was to look over what is being proposed here and make clarifications, make corrections, and so forth of what we have before us. I do 
do not think it's the place of any citizen that is not licensed to be an attorney to act as one or offer advice that an attorney alone could offer. My and I'm, I'm not here to listen to everybody's version of what the law dictates because I don't, now there may be an attorney in here tonight, but uh, I don't think Mr. Savage is an attorney and I would like to listen to an attorney's opinion once we have concocted what we want. We have a city attorney. We will, Mike. We will give him this instrument, and if he sees that this instrument uh, is insufficient uh, or illegal in any way, let a licensed attorney do that, and everybody quit acting like they're a lawyer. Anybody can offer any opinion they want, but it's irrelevant. We're trying to clarify and to and to change up what we want in here so it will fit the community. Not to argue. Mike, I just want to give some of the citizens a voice. Uh, I know, but, the, that, but I'm I know, saying I know. to act as a legal I know, representative of the public, it's illegal. You can't operate as a lawyer without a license. And, and anybody can Mike, derive at any opinion off of the computer. I could I could say what I thought too, but it wouldn't amount to hill of beans because I'm not an attorney. Okay. Yeah. Right. Ms. Savage, if you wish, give me about a minute or two of your thoughts. If you wish to speak, give me a minute or two of your You sure? Yes, ma'am, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, I think this is entirely too broad. The first thing Ray Threadgill said was make it simple. This is 12 pages. This is not simple. This is entirely too broad. And it doesn't need to be that large. I worked with Jerry Brown Wolf and my sister-in-law got hit by a dog. And it, we, we, what he said, work me up something. And at that time, we were going to go to the commissioner with it. And we were narrowing it down to about three or four things. Go to the people, tell them, give them the rabies law, give them a certain time, kind of a contact on the first complaint. The second complaint, go back and see if they fulfill the first one. And then the third one, give them their ticket. That's as simple as that. It doesn't need 12 pages to work, to work out something so simple. We are a country people. We're not we're not city. We are a country. We're a small place. And and, and that's that's my thoughts on this. And then on the fire, if we go over to that one, we've already worked that out under the crash thing. We've already been through that. And we we're aware of the the conflictive nature <coughs> of our trash ordinance and this and we're gonna work the details out concerning okay, that those one, two. that one was too broad, but we got it so uh, most of this has already been covered. Now, Mr. Tullickson wasn't in the city at that time, and he may not have had that fire, the fire thing. With the, with the so attorney he, actually he brought that. He a copy that. of that fire, of that trash ordinance. Yes, ma'am. He brought that, the attorney looked at that and actually mentioned. And then some of this stuff Specifically this, the fact uh, of the trash and ordinance. And I would have to go through this on this last one, that nuisance, uh, some of that's just nonsense. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Ray, please. Well, I'd like to start by saying I think the uh, committee did an excellent job in putting this together. They need to be commended, you know, for their work. Absolutely. I do have some, <coughs> some suggestions, not criticisms. I think any reference to a city pound needs to be eliminated. I think uh, the city pound in Coffee City is probably never going to happen. Jackie Pick. And commercial animal establishments, uh, that's a questionable item. Uh, I would suggest eliminating commercial establishment, any reference to commercial animal establishment. When you get to the fireworks section, under the abatement of nuisance, I think that 4117 needs to be removed. That gives the fire marshal authorization to come in your house and confiscate your fireworks. It is not illegal to own fireworks in the state of Texas. And if I had a box of fireworks in my house and somebody knocked on my door and come in and took them, I would be very unhappy. Now, misusing them, that's different. But giving somebody the authority to come in and confiscate something that's not illegal, I don't agree with that. That's 4117? Yes. Got it. Ray, I totally agree with you. I, you took all my speech away. 
That was a very good example of a, of a very uh, well presented thought process. Dwight, is Dwight? Uh, Krillia? Yes. You said it very well. Pardon me, sir? You said it very well. well thank you, sir. Most people don't. How are you this evening? Just fine, sir. Thanks for being here. I just now had an opportunity to start reading this, actually. I just had one thing that's caught my attention to maybe clarify. It talks about the um, feces on public property that's understandable. Uh, but it says private property. No, it's, that's very vague. Is that somebody else's private property or the person that, that lives there? Uh, that? Yeah, sure. It, it, it does say um, except for your own property. So oh, I didn't get to that part. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's, there are exceptions, okay. but if your dog goes on public or private property, well, then I'm, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Really, that's all I've said. Yeah. Okay. Dwight, thank you. You're welcome. That was a question I had myself. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Once you review them, if you have another question, uh, would be just raise your hand. I'll okay, sure. try to accommodate you. Don't mind, uh, Mr. Rutledge. Uh, yes, I was up here yesterday, and Chief Threadgill uh, had a couple of comments. He said he wouldn't be here tonight, and he asked me to pass them along. Uh, one of them under general provisions, uh, where it's talking about public nuisance. Uh, item seven is at large. He asked that that be removed because basically a dog that's just out wandering around, as he said, he sees them in the fields and, you know, said that's not a public nuisance and, and he doesn't want to be charged with picking those things up every time one just happens to be out and about if it's not bothering anybody. Well, uh, I, well, that was on my list of things also. Also on his list was under the uh, junk vehicle ordinance. Uh, the sale of junk vehicles, the way this is described is uh, will not only take personnel to monitor and, and do what has to be done here, he said if we could change that part of it to just as he does now with the record service that they have, it becomes between the record service and whoever the person is that they pick it up. You know, if they want it back and they pay, uh, that, that's, that would be very difficult for him to uh, control. Is there an Oh, that's yeah, I, I already discussed that with Ray. And, okay. You're going to remove the lean on junk vehicle 4304, the sale of junk vehicle 4305, and uh, make that the uh, at the discretion of the, the towing company that they would be in charge of removing the nuisance, but then they would be in, in, uh, able to do what they needed with it as far as collecting storage fees and everything to get the city out being the middle thing. And then this way, they don't have to wait until the city applies a lien on a junk vehicle to collect their money. It yeah. goes directly to the yeah. Well, that was, that was Ray's, problem. Chief Fred Gill's point, and I told him I would make it for him in that. And I've got a couple other things that, that we had talked about. All okay, time. I didn't realize y'all had talked, so. Oh, that's okay. Jerry, yeah, won't fit? Nope, that's it. Good input, Phil. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the last person I really am at loss, I reach your Friday. That'd be me. <laughs> 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 That's pitiful. I don't know what it is. <laughs> my, my only concern here is, yes, I realize this is a very broad spectrum of avoidances we're looking at. By the same token, we're on a path going down the road. We are now a larger city than we were a year ago. Chances are we're going to be a larger city at least three years from now. If we don't have a plan in going down this road, we're not ever going to know when we're lost. So if we put some things in place tonight, and maybe if you look at this, it is broad. But in discussion like this tonight, and, and Phil will tell you, and Steve will tell you, and Lee will, we did a lot of thought and a lot of effort into what you're looking at this evening. And what we're already finding in discussions now is we're making an improvement on what the committee did. Exactly. Exactly. That's what that was the entire intention of this meeting today, and I appreciate that. And, and I mean, I think we need to let the citizens talk a little more. I mean, I'm sure there's other opinions out there that I'd like to hear. Well, uh, but that said, and I only called this the last one was on the sign sheet. At this moment, is somebody seen something, heard something, or want to make an improvement on something that was said? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Riley's uh, I just wanted to ask one thing. Yes, sir. Uh, 
what would you're doing here now, going through the ordinances and everything? Yes, sir. All right. Now, some of them are okay with me, too. I mean, you know, not all of them, but uh, just a few. But are the citizens of Coffee City going to have a right to say on this, or are y'all going to make the vote for us? Well, it's a representative government, as, as you understand. So we will be the voting body that sanctions the final document. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to do is engage your input to make sure that what we finally sign off on is what Steve and the other members of the community got together and actually drew this up. This is a ground swell up activity. We, do not, we didn't want to mandate it from top down to you folks. Uh, we want the government to be responsible to you, of course. Right. And with that said, we would like, we're liking to hear what y'all have to say. And there's been several, several of you here that's putting some good thoughts. It's actually duplicating some of the ones that we as citizens of this city yeah. have as well. And we don't want this to be a club waved over you and hit right. you over the head to make you bye bye. It's something just to give us some discipline amongst ourselves. Wow. Good fences make good neighbors. <clears throat> and that's all we're trying yeah. to do and make our city have a, a, an image issue in the future that we'll be proud of. But Is there any dog ordinance now? No, sir. This this town has been very laxed in its past, right. and, and it wasn't until the last several years that there's been a change of attitude in the city to put some kind of organization into the city to make it some kind of a, of a thriving future right. for it. And so you I, can't get rid of your neighbor's dog? Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm well, I've got four <laughs> pit bulls living right next door to me, and they would make a cow ashamed. And they come right over in front of my truck, do their business and everything, and then we end up not seeing it at night or whatever, and, you got and then tracking it in yes. the house. Sir, have you read that ordinance? Uh, yes, I read it. Did you well, I was wondering if it was any now. No, sir, there's not. There's we, none this is a ground floor operation. Yeah, when it's enacted, then that is definitely covered in there. Yeah, I saw it.